Uh, we're all fixed. Hey, uh, good morning. My name is Brad Kane. Glad to be here. Many of you know uh, my uh, partner, uh, Jean Pierre. Uh, I'm president of COIN and also Salas. Every day, 2.8 million social workers report to work and they try to make their constituents' lives better. Remarkably, they attempt to do this with uh, paper forms, spreadsheets, outdated technology, and uh, hard to change enterprise applications. And that's the motivation for, for Salus. We know that social work is fundamentally hard. Um, they're, they're trying to intervene, to provide services, uh, to help people. And uh, that by its own nature, uh, doesn't always lead to the, to the outcomes that everyone wants. So in that kind of context, that's why we wanna work because uh, we feel that better tools um, can help. But what are some of the reasons why uh, in this environment, it's even harder to work? Well, mostly it comes down to uh, too many cases and too few caseworkers. There, on average, last year in the United States, there was about 67 caseworker. Um, I'm sorry, cases per caseworker. So that's 67 uh, children or families or individuals that that need help, all dependent mm -hmm. on the, the um, hard work and the organization of a of a social worker. But as I said, uh, we think that half of these individuals are locked into using forms, spreadsheets. Um, difficult to change applications or uh, these giant uh, monolithic applications like Appian and other BPM sorts of tools that are incredibly difficult to use and not really oriented towards uh, doing the work of case management. Case management is the established practice for how you take care of constituents. Um, there is a body of evidence that improving case management actually saves people's lives and can make a difference. And again, this is why we want to be part of this process. It involves a fundamental workflow of intake, monitoring, and reporting, uh, the provision of services, making referrals. This is day-to-day -day work that social workers go through to, to help individuals. There are other key aspects like um, making sure that there are timely uh, reactions uh, via alerts, notifications, and other mechanisms and reporting to uh, government or donors or other sources of funding to um, uh, demonstrate uh, you know, what you've been doing and how you've been making a difference, of course, is a key part. You know, our understanding is that there is a, such a broad range of the actual services being delivered and different types of organizations and how they work, that adaptability of case management is really one of the most critical factors. In other words, there's no one generic case management flow, uh, but if you had an engine that can support uh, the variation in these different services and adapt the different forms or workflow rules or other issues of precedence as you go through this process, that's really the uh, what, what you'll need. And even though there is a um, uh, uh, broad uh, sort of uh, applicability of, um, uh, of case management, we feel that uh, if you build it in an adaptable way, you actually have a fairly, you know, sort of horizontal piece of technology. In other words, one that can be used in a number of different contexts. So we think the solution is, is Salus. And uh, similar to, to Lean Time, uh, we want to leverage an open source platform. So much like uh, you know, Red Hat le leverages the open source Linux. We want to leverage an open source platform that we in fact built um, to uh, provide a SaaS solution. Typical SaaS uh, construct, and it's gonna be based on a per user per month subscription model. Uh, and we'll also be providing uh, customization, uh, integration, other configuration services uh, on top of that. <clears throat> So that we're going to be building on top of an open source platform that is Primero. That's something that, that Jean-Pierre's and my company uh, has, has built over the last few years for UNICEF. In fact, is the result of over nine years of work uh, with UNICEF, national governments around the world, uh, country offices, uh, perhaps $12 million in funding uh, you know, over the years. Uh, but most importantly, uh, work in the field with individuals actually delivering services in some of the most uh, challenged places uh, you know, of the earth. 
And at this point uh, in the project, uh, we have a fairly broad footprint within the UNICEF ecosystem, over 60 plus countries, uh, perhaps 10,000 users um, using uh, Primero every day. Just to give you an idea of what the platform looks like, because this is a, an existing in-use uh, you know, platform, uh, this is the case uh, manager dashboard. Um, I think one of the things that distinguishes uh, this work, this, this platform, is again that we were in the field in some uh, interesting places like Mogadishu or refugee camps in Kenya or in uh, refugee centers in Jordan, talking to the uh, case managers, the case workers, their executive leadership in the different organizations, and really finding out what drives them day to day uh, in terms of their jobs and, and helping to make a difference. Oops. It's built uh, to be uh, fully mobile from the ground up. In fact, we support a full offline mode, which is very important uh, when you think about people uh, working in the field where their constituents are. We've also um, had to um, uh, build in that sort of adaptability that I spoke about because there's such a huge range of variation, even within uh, UNICEF and its implementation partners, how they care for people. So again, from the beginning, we had to make that adaptability part of the platform. We had to focus a great deal on reporting, uh, the ability to get information out, again, for donors or sponsors or government to really understand the job that's, that's happening. And the last area that I'd sort of highlight is really this issue of data protections. Um, I think that this is an area where a lot of US centric uh, software developers uh, lag far behind, but because of the nature of the problem that we were solving, we had to think very carefully about what data was being captured, who could see it, who could have access to that. So we have a very fine grained uh, role and permissions model and very careful sort of thought full process about what information is available to whom as you go through this uh, social services workflow. Let's skip the target market for a second. Um, and I'll just close my uh, description with a little, with a few comments about the competition, because I think this is pretty important. Um, as I said, you know, we think a large number, and in fact, perhaps half of the social services workers out there use paper forms and spreadsheets. And the, the most fundamental problem there is that there really is no case management feature built into a spreadsheet. It's really just, a digitized sticky note, if you think about it. Um, and so the, um, the most acute problems here are that you can't scale this kind of process and it's still very uh, fault prone. In other words, drop cases, uh, missed interventions, you know, other problems. And this is really a large part of where we see uh, the adoption of a, uh, an offering like SALIS could happen with the small to medium sized organizations are so sort of stuck in this pre-digitized or barely digitized uh, world. Uh, there are uh, other options out there. In fact, there are outdated uh, sort of legacy applications that are used particularly in larger organizations like a state. Um, think a Oracle Forms application built in the early aughts. You know, that'll give you a good idea of what a, a, a state social services worker might be dealing with uh, every day. Or even the larger uh, BPM platforms like an Appian is my example here. Uh, we think these share a problem, which is that they're very um, difficult and costly to adapt. So they may be in place, um, but they really can't uh, change as the needs of constituents change and can't really adapt to evolving ways to deliver services. There are some SaaS uh, products out there. Uh, Apricot 360 is a particularly good one, in my opinion. It's also part of a larger enterprise suite of uh, nonprofit tools, donor manage management and grant management and some other tools besides case management. Um, but you know, we find that um, uh, th this is not, um, this is simply software, right? Like our advantage will be to invite uh, potential clients to become a member of this community where there's the open source uh, platform, but our service is built on top of that. I think that's how we're going to compete against, uh, against these sort of other SaaS offerings. But one that certainly deserves mention because of its size is the Salesforce nonprofit cloud. Um, this is probably uh, the top 
uh, the most widely used case management platform out there in the market, but even that's not very large. So overall, my, our takeaway on the existing market is that it's, it's fragmented, there, there's no clear pull, dominant player, and still, frankly, uh, half um, paper and spreadsheets and barely digitized uh, solutions. So I'll, I'll leave it there, um, but that's the concept behind Salus and how we want to leverage an open source platform to um, really improve how case management is done, make it more broadly available to a different market, and to, again, uh, be at a point where we can improve people's lives. Thank you, Brad.